Have you ever really thought about what's behind the AI that's changing our world? You know, the chatbot that helps you draft an email or the algorithm that picks your next movie? It all has to run on something. And that something isn't just a computer in a closet anymore. We are living through an industrial revolution happening at a speed and scale we've literally never seen before. So today, we're going to pull back the curtain on the incredible infrastructure being built to make it all possible. The AI factories. All right, let's just start with a number. 10 gigawatts. Now, this isn't the energy target for a small country. This is the planned power capacity for a single AI project. To power the future of artificial intelligence, we need absolutely staggering amounts of electricity. But what does a number like 10 gigawatts even mean? How can we wrap our heads around that? Well, there you go. It means you need about 10 nuclear power plants. Just imagine that. All the energy from 10 reactors, all of it, being funneled into one single objective. This is the kind of mind-blowing scale we're dealing with. It's forcing everyone to completely rethink what a data center even is. And that's the key, right? We actually need a new name for these things. Because they are not just data centers anymore. The people building them are calling them AI factories. And that's not just some cool marketing term. It's a real shift. These are industrial plants. The raw materials are electricity and data. And the finished product? Intelligence. This is a brand new kind of infrastructure for our planet. So let's dig into the first piece of this puzzle, the trillion dollar race to build these AI factories. It's a global construction boom that is completely reshaping everything from financial markets to energy grids. So who exactly is building this future? Who are the key players in this incredibly high stakes game? Well, they're the new titans of compute. The whole thing is being driven by a pretty small group of players with massive amounts of capital and, frankly, a huge vision for the future. You've got the hyperscalers. Think Microsoft, Amazon, Google. They're basically the landlords of this new AI economy. Then you have tech giants like Meta who are betting their entire company on AI. After that, you've got billionaire-led projects like Elon Musk's XAI, which are building their own private AI empires. And finally, you have entire countries, like the UAE and China, jumping in because they see AI infrastructure as vital for their power in the 21st century. And just look at the scale of these projects. I mean, it's almost hard to believe. The Stargate initiative from OpenAI and Microsoft? Up to half a trillion dollars for that 10 gigawatt network we just talked about? You know, the one needing 10 nuclear reactors? Or look at Elon Musk's Colossus project, which needs over a gigawatt of power, Amazon is dropping around $150 billion. Meta's Hyperion is targeting more than 2 gigawatts. These aren't just big investments. They are generational projects that are pushing the absolute limits of engineering, finance, and, of course, energy. So all of this crazy demand for power at the campus level, it's all because of a revolution that's happening on a much, much smaller scale, inside one single server rack. And this is where the physics of AI computing starts to get really interesting. For years, a standard server rack in a data center used about 10 to 15 kilowatts of power. Think of it like running a couple of big ovens in your house. Well, AI has made that completely obsolete. Today's AI racks are already pulling between 40 and 130 kilowatts. That's a nearly 10-fold jump in power packed into the exact same amount of space. But here's the thing. They're just getting started. 1,000 kilowatts. That's one full megawatt of power. Now, this isn't some far-off sci-fi idea. This is the industry's real target for a single server rack by the year 2028. We're talking about a nearly 100 times increase in power density from just a decade ago. It's insane. And that brings us to a huge engineering problem. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? When you cram that much energy into such a tiny space, you create an unbelievable amount of heat. So how on earth do you stop the multi-million dollar processors in these things from literally melting? Well, the simple answer is, you can't use air anymore. The laws of physics just get in the way. Once you get past about 35 kilowatts in a single rack, it is physically impossible to move enough air fast enough to get the heat away. So the entire industry is being forced to switch to liquid cooling. Why? Because liquid is about 3,000 times better at moving heat around. There are two main ways they're doing it. The first is called direct-to-chip, where they pump liquid coolant right onto the processor itself. The second is even more wild. It's called immersion cooling, and they literally submerge the entire server in a special non-conductive fluid. 
Okay, let's zoom back out for a second, because all of this power, all of this heat, all these liquid cooling systems, they have a massive, and I mean massive, impact on something we all take for granted, the global power grid. I mean, the numbers here really tell the story. In 2023, data centers around the world used about 55 gigawatts of power. By 2030, that is expected to more than double. And here's the kicker. AI is the main character in this story. It's expected to account for something like 70% of all that new demand. We are essentially building an entirely new layer of electricity demand for the whole planet, almost all of it for AI. And you might be thinking, okay, that's a big problem for power companies, but what does it have to do with me? Well, it has a direct impact on your wallet. In places where these AI factories are being built, the cost of upgrading the grid, building new power plants, new transmission lines, that cost is being passed down to everybody. In fact, in one big electricity market on the East Coast, this demand is directly linked to an expected $16 to $18 increase on the average person's monthly power bill. And this all leads us to the final and maybe the most important question in this whole transformation. We have to talk about the huge environmental and societal trade-offs, what we can call the sustainability paradox of AI. Here's the fundamental conflict. On one side, you have the incredible promise that AI can help us solve our biggest problems, even something like climate change, by making grids more efficient or designing new materials. But then you flip the coin over and you see the price. The very infrastructure we need to build that AI has a massive and growing environmental footprint of its own. It needs new power plants and uses enormous amounts of fresh water just for cooling. And this shows you what's really happening on the ground. You hear a lot from tech companies about being 100% renewable. But the truth is, AI factories need power that is 100% reliable, 24-7, no exceptions. The sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow. That reliability gap means that in a lot of places, the grid is still more than 50% powered by fossil fuels. So to fill that gap, the industry is turning to new natural gas plants and is also a huge driver behind what people are calling a nuclear renaissance. So this is where we're left. We're facing what's basically an inescapable trilemma, a choice between three things that are all in conflict. How do we, as a society, balance these things? On one hand, there's the race for technological supremacy, to be the world leader in AI. On the other, there's the need for it all to be economically viable and justify these trillion-dollar price tags. And then there's the urgent, critical need for environmental sustainability, to manage the incredible strain this is putting on our planet. Pushing forward on one of these often means pulling back on the others, and figuring that out is the central challenge of our time. This explainer was researched by Gemini Deep Research and is fully AI-generated.